Surprise, Sydney. What is up, you guys? Nick at the Lost River Drive-In coming at you tonight to talk about something that I need to get off my chest. Ranking the Scream series from worst to best. So I just want to say really quick before we get into it, I am not going to include the TV series in this video. I have seen all three seasons of the TV series. I did not care for it. There was one season that I thought was decent, the most recent season actually being absolutely terrible. So I'm glad that that experiment is over and done with, and I don't want to speak about it. So we're going to start with the movies. <laughs> And coming in at number four, my least favorite Scream movie is Scream 3, to nobody's surprise. Scream 3 takes place a couple years after Scream 2. Uh, Sydney kind of lives in seclusion. She's got a new name, basically a hermit in the sense that she works from home. She lives in this house that's like way up down a long driveway, a gate and everything. She's basically like, she lives in a castle and she's surrounded by like 1,500 moats. You know, she doesn't want to take the chance of being found by another ghost face killer, whoever that may be. And then you have Dewey and Gale. They're like estranged right now. Um, I, I don't believe they're together anymore. Dewey is like a security guard kind of. And then you have the whole Stab 3 is being made, you know, the movie about the Woodsboro killings or the franchise about the Woodsboro killings, I should say. So it's in, you know, it's it's out in the open. Real kills start happening again. Spoiler alert, starting with Cotton you Weary. Lose. You know, it all circles back. Ghostface is back. Who's Ghostface this time? Why is he ruining Stab 3's production? Oh, no. Sidney Prescott to the rescue. There's some treats in store. And that's basically Scream 3. I will say one good thing about Scream 3 is the climax. The whole like last 30 minutes taking place at the mansion. Same place they shot Halloween H2O. Served as the uh, private school. And I've been there. Actually uh, wasn't able to get in the gate. But I've got pictures from outside the gate. So that was kind of cool. That whole finale is really cool. I do enjoy that. There are some good kills in it. The problem with Scream 3 for me, and I think for most people, is for the first hour or so of the movie, it's just really hard to get into. You have really bad actors that are supposed to be actors playing these actors. It, you've got some... There's not a lot of story there. There's not a lot of, like, meat to it. It's kind of just like everything is happening by... Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, Ghostface is back. Oh, yeah, because why not? Oh, and, you know... The reveal is kind of convenient that way too. It's just, it seemed really lazy. Uh, and I think that was because Kevin Williamson did not write this one. So go figure. The one that he didn't write is the worst one. There's not much to talk about Scream 3 that hasn't really been talked about. I just think that it's really kind of cheesy. Losing characters like a Randy definitely shows in this movie because there's not that comedic, witty relief. The whole being meta and self-aware is like... This is the worst at it. It's like, it's they don't even try. They, they really don't even try. And there are multiple parts in this movie that are like, ha, get it? And you're just like, come on, man. I'm not stupid. And we're going to give that one a thumbs down. Coming in at number three is Scream 4. This one is hard because I like the, the next three movies. I really, really do. That cannot be overstated because I don't want people to go, oh, you put Scream 4 at number three? You must hate Scream 4. No, no, I really like Scream 4, actually. I enjoy it every time I watch it. Scream 4 is basically years later. I think it's like 10 years later. Everyone has gone, you know, doing their own thing in their lives. Dewey and Gale are married now. Dewey is the sheriff of Woodsboro. Sydney has a book. And she's kind of on this book tour promoting it. And then she ends up in Woodsboro. She has a niece who lives there, played by Emma Roberts. And uh, they're coordinating like, oh, you're back in town. Like, let's say, hey, because I'm here for my book tour. Oh, my God. Killings start happening again. Oh, it's because Sydney's back, right? Fuck you, Sydney. Oh, it's all your fault, Sydney. There's like literally a part where like there's a crime scene. And, and Sydney's like, cause she's like looking or whatever. And I, there's a woman that says like, this is your fault, Sydney. Or this is because of you, Sydney. And you can like hear it. And I'm like. Fuck you. No, it's not. Sydney doesn't make people want to kill... <laughs> kill other people. It's not her fault. And uh, that's basically how it goes. But in this movie, you get an infusion of new people. Uh, young high schoolers. Kind of a new group that they're trying to put in there. To kind of revitalize the whole like teen group from Scream. 
uh, from 15 years before that. And so it's you've got, you've got the old crew and the new crew and their paths intersect and they work together to try to find out who the killer is and why the killer's doing what the killer's doing while also having the new age of cameras and cell phones and blogging and you know all this so the it's the the killer's basically making his own movie in this one with webcams and and, and cameras and cell phone footage and all that shit so that's that's kind of cool take note halloween resurrection that is how you implement modern technology into a movie without it being too gimmicky so yeah and that's basically the story of scream 4 nev campbell's a badass in it as she is always the finale is really cool although i do feel like the payoff isn't I feel like the payoff is probably one of the most expected payoffs in the series, if not the most expected. I don't know, though. There's an argument for Bill and Stu. I don't know. I, for me, Scream 4 is all around just a really enjoyable movie, uh, pretty much from start to finish. It's super fun. It's funny. The kills are cool. But I think the thing that keeps it away from the number two spot is the ending, I th you know, the reveal and whatnot. I feel like that, that was just, eh, and they fucking killed Kirby, dude. Well, no, they didn't kill Kirby. She's not dead, but they won't bring her back. What the hell, man? She was awesome. She was like the modern Randy. That was a terrible, terrible decision. I do enjoy the movie, I will say. I cannot reiterate that enough. The deputy's lemon bars just taste, taste like, like ass. ass. Coming in at number two is Scream 2. Yes, and I struggle with this one, believe it or not. <laughs> These top three are so weird because I've never, you know, I've never messed around with putting Scream 4 as number one, but I have many times thought Scream 2 was number three and Scream 4 was my number two. And I thought before maybe Scream 2 was my favorite over Scream. Like, it's hard. Uh, Scream 2 is basically, you know, a little bit of time has passed and he's in college now, trying to get on with a normal life and the killings start back up. And right after, uh, this is right after Stab comes out, the very first movie in the uh, movies about the Woodsboro killings. She's off at college and the killings start back up and immediately with her PTSD and whatnot, she's like, okay, who is it? Who around me is the killer? So half the movie is spent with Sydney kind of scared and, and not knowing who she can trust around her and questioning everything. And then the second half being Sydney like, all right, you know what? Screw this. I'm I, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I wouldn't even say it's the second half. It's like toward the end of the movie. Meanwhile, she has a new group of friends, but you still have Randy. You've got Timothy Oliphant in this movie. I can't remember his character's name. And then you've got Jerry Maguire in this movie. And that's like her boyfriend, love interest in the movie. Derek, I believe his name is. Things about Scream 2 that I really, really enjoy. I like the reveal at the end. I think one of the two people involved was pretty easy to, you know, detect that this guy was going to be part of it. And the uh, second one is like, ah, eh, I don't know. It's a little iffy for me, but not terrible. Not terrible. Pretty cool reveal and good reason behind it too. Also love how they cash in on the, uh, the movies make me do it excuse, which is bullshit. Movies, television, and video games do not make you become a psychopath. Stop telling people that. It's not true. The kills are really cool in this movie. I think that the angst and, and, and the feuding between uh, Gale and Dewey throughout the movie, is it, it makes for a lot of laughs. Nev Campbell, again, is just fantastic in the movie. One of the coolest things about Nev Campbell's development as a character throughout this series is that she started as a victim, and she's been a victim ever since what happened to her mom. And at one point, you know, in these movies, she just stops and goes, I'm not going to be a victim anymore. And by the time you get to like Scream 3, after, you know, halfway through that movie, she's like, bring it on. Like, I don't give a shit. And same thing with Scream 4. She's like going after these motherfuckers. So love Nev Campbell. She does great in this movie too. The whole ending sequence is really cool. Having it happen on a college campus, you know, like stalking through the sorority house and stuff was pretty cool. Scream 2 is just a really smart movie. And uh, it, uh, just like its predecessor, it's got a nice payoff. It's got cool kills it's got great acting it's got really smart writing again randy is just great although uh you know losing him sucked definitely you know it's just overall a very very good movie and again i like i said i've struggled with this one whether it's my favorite or my number two you know i struggle sometimes with it <laughs> Coming in at number one, to nobody's surprise, is Scream. Yes, that's right. Scream, 1996's Scream, pretty much become a modern horror classic. Uh, revitalized the slasher genre. I don't really know if I have to tell you guys the plot, but you pretty much know it. Kills start happening at Woodsboro High. Sydney Prescott and her group of friends is caught in the middle of it. Who's the killer? Why do they want Sydney? And what does it have to do with Sydney's mom and her past? That's pretty much the plot of Scream. Scream was really cool because it was revolutionary in the sense that it was it was a slasher movie that was taking itself seriously, but also was very self-aware and meta and, and knew all the tropes and the jokes that are, are, are played at the expense of movies like this. And it, it played on that and it did really, really well. It took itself seriously 
So you're not watching this movie going like, oh, what a joke. Like, no, you can do both. You can walk that fine line. And Scream does that really, really well. It birthed a Scream Queen in Nev Campbell. You got Drew Barrymore at the beginning, and that's an iconic, iconic scene. By the way, he's not wrong, okay? Jason was not the killer in Friday the 13th. He didn't show up till part two. So technically, he didn't trick Drew Barrymore. She just she didn't think. But yeah, I mean, Scream was just awesome. Uh, Henry Winkler in this movie, too, is like... I was sad to see him die too. But yeah, uh, really just uh, overall a really good movie. It's something that I find myself watching multiple times a year because it's a movie I don't ever feel like I get burnt out on. And I feel like that's because of how unique it is. It's one of those movies that has rewatch value for years and years and years. I hope that continues. So that's my Scream ranking, guys. Uh, needless to say, I am super stoked about the new Scream movie coming out in January, Scream 5, or being billed as Scream. I cannot wait to do a trailer reaction for that. I cannot wait to discuss that more with you guys when we get more news on that. They've got a great cast. They apparently got a great story. It's gonna be bloody. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic. And early reports are that they are planning on making a sixth movie. Let's hope that, uh, our girl Nev Campbell stays alive because we need some Sydney Prescott in our lives. That is my ranking of the Scream franchise. Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, tell me what you think of my ranking, and leave some suggestions for some content you'd like me to do. Reviews, collections, opinions, news, name it, and I'll see if I can do it if I've seen it. All right, guys, this is Nick from the Lost River Drive-In, and I am pulling out.